Did the new Scream 6 poster just reveal a little too much about the upcoming movie? Let's get into it. Well, sometimes that is better. Hey everybody, what's up? Killjoy Jake here, and instead of having friends, I have horror movies. Today we're talking a little bit about The Purge 6, as well as Scream 6. It's a shame there's not another sixth movie in some franchise coming out soon for me to talk about or have an update on, because then this would be the number of the beast! Before we first get into this Purge 6 update that I'm sure many of you will skip, I'm gonna need y'all to like this video and subscribe for more horror updates in the future. Please don't skip that update. Maybe you'll learn about something you might also be interested in. I don't know, maybe there's a reason Jake puts those in the videos or something. I, I, hey, I don't know, man, you know? <laughs> Try other horror movies out too. There's other things than Scream, believe it or not. So talking about the sixth movie in the Purge franchise that is currently being written by James DeMonico. It was announced recently that this new film would bring back Frank Grillo's character, Leo Barnes, back into the equation. This character has been absent from the franchise since the third film. It's a shame, really, because Frank Grillo really makes those second and third Purge movies stand out. They are easily my two favorites, and man, did I miss him in the last two flicks in this franchise. Director James DeMonico says, I think I'm going to write the next one, and if the audience wants it, we'll do it. Again, I think I came up with a new way to flip the whole thing upside down, and it'll be five years after the Forever Purge, but it takes America in a whole new direction, and I think it would be a very interesting place to explore. Also talking about the sixth Purge movie, Frank Grillo says, I've got one more Purge movie left. James DeMonico has the script. It focuses on the Leo Barnes character, and he wants to direct it. We're working with Universal to see if we can pull this off before I'm in the old folks' home. My big thing about the Purge movies is that when you're starting off with that first movie, it's kind of just a home invasion thriller that doesn't really understand how cool the concept they're working with is. The second movie fully actualizes that, I feel like, and it's probably my favorite, but then three is also a really fun follow-up. I really like both of those movies a lot, where if you just go back and watch one, it's a really good home invasion thriller with Ethan Hawke, but, you know, that's about it. The second and third movies, on the other hand, feel like something I've never really seen before, and if you love or hate this franchise, I kind of get that. It's kind of a take-it-or-leave-it type of franchise. The fourth Purge movie, which is a prequel, I, I'm whatever about but then the Forever Purge is kind of this big monkey wrench that kind of just throws everything that was set up in two and three out the window. So I really don't know how they're going to connect all of that stuff to what happened in the Forever Purge and now make another movie that focuses on the main character from Purges two and three. I don't know how they're going to do it, but you know what? I'm I'm here for it. I'll check it out. They're once again talking about the newest entry in the Purge franchise is probably the last one, but they are also saying that about the Forever Purge, which now is not going to be the case. In all honesty, though, maybe they should just end at this point, it's starting to get really convoluted story-wise, and I feel like this one isn't going to help that all that much. With the way things got left off in The Forever Purge, I would imagine that this movie is going to be even bigger and apocalyptic even, so I don't really know where they could go moving forward past this next one, but hey, we'll just have to see. I'm staying open-minded about a sixth Purge film. I really don't know what they can do to make it more over the top than five, but also keep it as linear as, as uh, the second and third movie. I don't really know. I don't know what else they can do with it, but hey, I'm, I'm just excited to see Leo Barnes back. That's cool. Hey, that's something. And please, God, do not put the Wilhelm scream in this. Isn't The Purge supposed to be like this serious political satire and then y'all are just making it super silly in that fifth entry? I don't know, man. That was just kind of strange and out there for me. I am all about horror movie continuations getting silly and ridiculous at some points, but like this at its core is a political satire, so you can't really do that with a Purge sequel in my mind. So I'm really hoping 6 gets away from the sillier stuff introduced in Purge 4 and 5, and we can kind of just go back to what made 2 and three so great. Fingers crossed, baby. Fingers crossed. But yesterday on Christmas, getting into a Scream 6 update, we got ourselves a brand new poster for the film that proved to be very revealing. The poster is of Times Square in New York City, but now all of the screens feature a ghost face killer, some with a bloody knife even. Right in the middle of Times Square too, you can see one lone ghost face killer standing there, maybe indication of how many killers are going to be in this new movie. Killers meaning one, dropping the S of course. Right behind that Christmas tree in Times Square too, we can see a sign that says Stab 9 in Roman numerals. So talking about that for one second, are we really doing Stab 9 for Scream 6, man? Like, I just, what else can we do with the whole Stab idea? I just feel like we have played that out and beaten it to death at this point. I feel like the Stab stuff is a little played out in these movies, and I kind of just hope it's not a big focus of the entire next film. There are so many different things we could talk about in a Scream film, I hope we kind of get past that. To the left is a big sign for Blackmore University, which has already been confirmed to be the name of the university that some of our characters are going to. Tara, Mindy, and Chad are presumably all going there, 
there alongside some other characters, which I'm just assuming are college kids like Liana Liberato's character, Devin Nakata, Jack Champion. I'm assuming they're all going to be going to this college, this university. Sam is probably just along for the ride, protecting Tara. I mean, remember that whole bit at the end of Scream 5? I imagine that she never wants to leave Tara out of her sight again. So maybe Sam has followed her to New York City and is living a new life with her there. There's also the tagline teased to the right here. It says, New York, new rules and all that. Do you want to play a game and all that underneath it? It's great. It's cute. It's great. I love it. But the most interesting thing about this poster is the musical titled Wrongly Accused. Now, it has been theorized for a while now that at some point in this movie, we might be getting some kind of stab musical or something based off of the events of like the past film. If you remember from behind the scenes set photos, things I covered all the way back in like August, I want to say August, July, when they were filming this puppy, there was a bunch of pictures taken at this big theater in Montreal. It's go like gorgeous pictures, absolutely. And I'm imagining it's probably going to be the third act set piece. Very similar to Scream 2, which on a side note has me worried a bit. I just really hope this isn't just a remake of Scream 2, but set in New York City opposed to Ohio. I've seen other Radio Silence movies and other movies written by Guy Busick and James Vanderbilt. These guys are creative. They can come up with something new. Y'all don't always gotta be riffing off of Kevin Williamson and Wes Craven. I'm just saying. But besides this probably being a big third act set piece where we're walking around a bunch of like a whole stadium of ghost faces and people killing each other, I also want to talk about some of the characters who have yet to be confirmed as to why they're involved in this new set of killings. Now, we know about the roles of many of the new characters coming into this film. Henry Zerny from Ready or Not is playing a therapist. Josh Sagara is probably Sam's love interest. We know that Jack Champion, Liana Liberato, Devin Nakata, they're all younger actors, so probably college students. But there's two characters where someone hasn't just completely spilled the beans, like Dermot Mulroney, who basically just outright said, oh yeah, I'm a cop. Samara Weaving and Tony Revolori's roles in this upcoming film are some that are actually very well kept. I'm, we're not 100% sure as to what they're going to be playing in this film. We just have some set photos of them in certain costumes. There's a few pictures that are kind of telling as to what these characters' roles will be in this new film, and I'm really thinking that they're actors in this musical. Tony Revolori, for instance, is wearing these big ghost face boots, and that's a little revealing. I don't think they would just uh, reveal that he's the ghost face killer in this movie, but maybe he's the ghost face killer in the musical, and he's not actually a killer in real life. I don't know. Samara Weaving was also seen wearing a dress that is literally the exact same color as like the pantsuit, power suit, whatever the hell we want to call it from Scream 1 that Gail Weathers is wearing. So my guess is that this musical is probably about the actual victims behind the stab movies. And maybe Samara Weaving's character is playing like a fictionalized Gail Weathers in this musical. The opening scene of the film, for instance, could be like in the green room, Samara Weaving's putting on her makeup. She's like one of the big stars of the show. Let's say Tony Revolori tries to get into her room and try to get an autograph, maybe even a little something else. Listen, I don't know, man. I don't know who this character is. I'm assuming that Tony probably isn't a big star of the show. He's probably just the guy who's wearing the ghost face costume who runs around and pretends to stab the people who are singing. Once again, only guessing that based off of the costumes I have seen these people in during the time that they were on set. So I don't really have too much to go off of. But I think it would be really funny if maybe he comes in and he's like, he's like, oh, can I get an autograph? And maybe can I get a little something else? He's a little pervy, a little creepy or something. Samara Weaving's just like, no, get the hell out of here. What the hell? Then a real ghost face comes in and maybe stabs the shit out of her. Tony Revolori is suspect number one for a little while until he gets stabbed too. Oh, what a twist. Just a convoluted theory. It's not one I'm super married to or anything. Trust me, I would love to see Samara weaving more in this film. They could be the killers too. Maybe they're working together behind the scenes of this musical. Something we haven't even touched on yet is what is this musical about? Wrongly accused. Are we talking about Cotton Weary, like going all the way back to that? Or are we talking about something that's a little more relevant? I've been theorizing for a while that there would be some kind of connection to Scream 4. And there's a lot of things about Scream 4 that are still ambiguous that we still don't have answers to. If you go back and watch that movie, even with the additional hospital scene that was added to the film to give it some more resolution, opposed to Jill just being like wheeled away and never actually revealed to the public as the killer, that's still kind of how the movie ends, if you remember. One of the last things you can hear in Scream 4 is someone talking positively about Jill, about how she saved the day. So at some point, someone had to come in there and be like, oh no, actually Jill was the killer, she's dead now. Like some something had to have happened that dragged drastically changed all of that, as well as also finding out the news that Kirby Reed is still alive. That's kind of why I'm not super upset with Kirby being brought back to life. I see a lot of fans who are uh, very upset about that, but like at the same time, that movie was probably the most ambiguously ended Scream film out of the entire bunch by far. Literally all of those movies end with some kind of wide panning shot and then like all the characters are safe and everything's fine and, and happy, but not really in Scream 4. Scream 4 is really the only movie to kind of break that mold a teeny tiny bit. So what if during that whole weird period that is yet to be explored, what if Kirby Reed was also blamed for the killings opposed to Charlie? Well, like, what if there's this weird 
subset of people who think that Kirby and Jill were the killers, opposed to Charlie and Jill. Kirby and Jill were like best friends, as that movie kind of introduces. It makes a lot of sense for her to be the accomplice, opposed to Charlie. So I could see that being the case. I could see a whole subset of people kind of believing that about Kirby Reed. And once again, the only thing we really know about Kirby moving forward into the future, like how her character is now, is that she is getting interviewed for being a survivor from the Woodsboro Massacre. We don't necessarily know what people think about her. There could be a huge bit of social commentary in this movie all about victim blaming, which I think actually would be pretty interesting if we explored that in the Scream movie a bit. That would make Kirby's involvement in this new film way more interesting, in my opinion, instead of just being some FBI agent that randomly got assigned to this case. I'm really hoping they play into something like that, but what do you guys think? Do you think someone in this cast has been wrongly accused of being a ghost face killer who is still out on the loose? Could that be the case? Leave me something about it in the comments below. Thank you all for watching this brand new Purge 6 and Scream 6 update. Lots of sixes today. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content in the future. Please consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a channel member by clicking that join button on my page. Thank you guys so much for watching again. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.